the session. A very good more good afternoon, sir, everyone. Really appreciate all of you for taking your time off your busy schedule to join me here today. I know I know it's uh, around lunch time, and many of you are having your lunch. So I'll try to make this session here. I'll go with a quite relaxed and a slow pace and be as interesting as possible as our tensions are very tight uh, in recent days due to the GE15, right? Everyone was asking who will be the next PM. Yeah, so um, my name is Elvin and I am the research analyst for FSM1 Malaysia. My topic for today will be 100 a month of fortune in future. So although it may sound like a very fascinating or metaphor, but it's it actually uses a very basic method of investing, which is the dollar cost averaging. And we think that wealth can be created by setting aside some money for investment regularly. So uh, people can have very, very different dreams and living a wealthy, carefree life is many, many people's goal. But if we do not like born in a very wealthy family, more often than not, we had to depend on ourselves by working hard with good money management to achieve such goals. So every time after getting your like hard earned salary, why uh which what would you do with the remaining amount of uh after spending on necessities, commitments, and savings? Would you like uh to put it into the bank with fixed fixed deposits? or spend it on luxury items or investing. Uh, in fact, uh, investing is a good option. Uh, you do not require a huge initial capital to start invest your investing journey. And believe me or not, with just a little amount on a regular basis, we will be able to bring a great fortune for you in the future. So investing is a long-term game that will build wealth over time with more often and not requires investing regularly. Uh, and experts have also agreed that some money, uh, setting aside some money for investment on a regular basis over time is able to uh, make average people wealthy. So the basic concept of making money is through investment is by buying low and sell high. So looking at this chart over here, if, we, if I just buy at this price and then sell at this price and buy here again and sell here again, and buy here again and sell here again, and buy here again and sell here again, I did make a lot of profit, but uh, why even with such basic concepts, there are still so many people losing money in the stock market? Because in, uh, in reality, in order to do so, this requires investors to time the market, but then timing the market is a loser's game. One can never pre perfectly time the market, not even Warren Buffett or Ray Dalio. If you look at the example here, where do we think is the best point to buy? So we all know that we should buy when the market is bottom. But in fact, there is no lowest point and always a lower point. Let's see in this example, if investors, uh, where do you think that the stock market, the bottom will be? Most investors will use the, the, the IPO price as the bottom of stock as shown in the red line here. And uh, investors, if investors, investors buy it at this price, uh, they'd be able to make a 64% loss. So looking at another example here, uh, we see that the prices uh, were, were plunging fast. And if we were to catch the bottom, where do you think that investors will co be comfortable to buy it? Uh, if we use this area as a gauge to the bottom of the stock, um, the investors will think that they will buy at the, around this price, right? So if the prices are still here, they will continue to, to wait. So what happened next? The stock market rally after without hitting the bottom and investors who waited for the bottom will end up missing the rally, which again shows that timing the market is a loser's game. So if, um, if I were a new investor who do not have much time to monitor the movement of stock or timing the market, what is the best way I can do? The regular savings plan is a regular subscription plan for funds investment and it uses the concept of dollar cost averaging. And what is dollar cost averaging? Dollar cost averaging, uh, and how can it benefit you? So uh, assuming that you inherit a large sum of money, do you just lump sum invest it in the stock market or make it make more sense to break the chunk into smaller amounts and invest a certain amount regularly over time? 
So the dollar cost averaging is an investment strategy in which an investor plays a fixed amount into the investment on a regular basis. It is a very popular method of investing that used by one of the most successful investors in the world, Warren Buffett. Uh, basically, regular savings plan is about investing a, a fixed amount of money in the relevant funds recurringly, regardless of market conditions. So uh, this causes fewer, fund, uh, fewer units of bought when prices are high and high, and whereas more units are brought when prices are low. As a result, in a rising and fluctuating market, uh, the average cost of, for all investments uh, for all the units can be lower than the average price during the, uh, the same period. So this allows them to profit from market dips by purchasing more shares when the prices are is low without the nerves that um, uh, some investors often have when they see the value of, of their investments dip. So over time, the accumulated sum at the end of the period will increase. So for, for investor, basically you just need to uh, pick, pick some stocks, figuring out how much you can afford to invest and then commit to buying the shares at the preset intervals. And it is very simple as anyone who has a proper investment account can use this method. Uh, some even have their accounts set up to automatically invest the money in a vehicle of choice when the money is deposited based on the predetermined schedule. So automating this will uh, reduce likelihood of panic when recession or turn oil are constant news headlines. And the problem is that many small investors get scared when the market gets volatile and sell off at the worst time possible and just start, uh, start getting back when, when things are looking toppy again. This is a common mistake that we see during the, every recession. Well, the little people are panicking, the large institutional investors are profiting by buying uh, stocks at very, very cheap prices. So Warren Buffett has said that he made large percentage of his fortune by taking advantage of discounted investments during the Great Recession and waiting for the prices to recover. And um, so a lot of people might be asking, how much can 100 a month worth in the future? So let's start off by, uh, by doing some simple maths with some simple basic assumptions. Uh, you are starting with no, no savings. Your investments uh, will earn, assuming that your investments will earn around 5% per annum, and you will retire at 60 years old. And then I'm showing you three different scenarios where you are starting investing in different ages while holding the other factors the same. So for a young woman, 18 years old, if you stash away like 100 ringgit per month, you will end up around 170,000 ringgit by 60 years old. If you started investing in like uh, 25 years old, you end up around 113,000 by 60 years old. And if you start at 30 years old, you are stashing away 100 per month earns you around 83,000 ringgit by uh, 60 years old. So investing, uh, so in short, it means that investing uh, in a long period of time will let you take advantage of the power of compounding interest which means that you not only get the returns on the money you, you invested, but you also get the returns on top of the returns. So what are some uh, features, features for the regular savings plan? First, uh, the regular savings plan has low entry requirement and a minimum investment could be low, as low as 100 ringgit. Next, there is no minimum participation, no lock-in period for this. So uh, at any time, you may submit a termination request online to, termi to terminate your uh, RSP, and then there is no cancellation fee. Unlike installment plans, uh, investors do not need to feel burdened as there is no interest rate charge besides, uh, besides the regular savings plans offered allows you to make most of the market highs and lows. By practicing a disciplined regular investment contribution, you'll be able to buy more units when the price is low and fewer units when the price is high. So uh, let's take a look at some of the real life example here. Uh, on how that RSP can help you to build your wealth over time. First, we have to start out with a case study for unit trust. The principal Asia Pacific Dynamic Income Fund is one of our recommended fund for Asia region that is available in our platform. So if we were to invest 100 a month in the fund from 2011 to 2022, and by the end of October 2022, we end up with around 30, uh, 95,000 units with a total investment value of 19,000. With the total uh, capital 
invested of around 13,400. This translated into an upside potential of 43%. Since it is an income fund, that means that they will have a regular distribution of income to unit holders. And based on the latest filing, the annual distribution is uh, around 689 for the, based on the amount of units hold of around 95,000 units. Next, uh, we have another recommended funds of ours for the US. If we were to invest a, a to, uh, 100 a month in the fund in 2000, from 2011 to 2022, by the end of October 2022, we will end up with uh, around 38,600 uh, units with a total investment value of around 26,000 ringgit Malaysia. And uh, with the total capital, startup capital, uh, capital of around 13,400, this translated into an upside potential of 100%. So uh, now let's take a look at some of the individual equities. The first example we have here is the Petronas Chemicals Group. Uh, to make it more like, easily understandable and less confusing, let's assume that we are able to invest 100 per month because in re reality, uh, Malaysia stocks are sold in bot lot or odd lot, and normally uh, investors will go for the bot lot, meaning that investors will need to buy at least 100 of units of shares if they don't want to pay a premium for buying the odd lot. So, uh, and more often or not, uh, buying 100 shares is more than 100, 100 ringgit if prices per share is more than 1 ringgit per share. But to make it easier, let's assume that we are able to invest 100 per month into Petronas Chemicals from 2010 to 2022. And by the end of October 2022, we will end up with a total units of 2,600, which translated into uh, the total amount of 22,800. And uh, comparing to our total capital invested of around 14,400, which is derived by placing 100 per month into the stocks, uh, we will have a capital gain of around 58%. And uh, on top of that, we are still receiving dividends every year. And in this case, we will we assume that we do not reinvest the dividends at all, meaning that we will use it all after getting the dividends. And based on the uh, latest filings for 2022, the annual dividend for 2022 of the capital, total capital invested is around 1,256. So instead, if we choose to invest in the fixed deposits for the same period for 2.9% per annum, and I just uh, briefly used the average of the past interest to get this number. Uh, I would end up with a total amount of around 17,200. Um, and this is amount is also assuming that interest are compounded. So even so, the total amount I gain from the regular investment is still much higher than putting it in the fixed deposits. Next, uh, we have a family renowned brand. Uh, Maybank can be considered as the icon for the Malaysia Stock Exchange as it is the largest capit market capitalization stocks in Malaysia. And it is also one of the uh, one of re retail investors' most favorite blue chip stocks. So the same assumption we apply here by investing 100 per month into Maybank from 1996 uh, to 2002. And by the end of October 2022, we will end up with a total units of 12,300, which has translated into uh, 105,000 ringgit Malaysia. Comparing to our capital invest, total capital invested of 31,500, which is derived by placing 100 per month into the stocks, we will have a capital gain of 235% in 26 years while still receiving dividends every year without reinvesting such dividends. And based on the latest filings, uh, the annual dividend for 2002 of the total capital invested is around 7,100. Just imagine receiving 7,000 a year uh, without the need to do anything from dividend itself. Uh, meanwhile, uh, if you choose to invest in the fixed deposits for 2.9% uh, per annum, we would end up with a total amount of 46,500. It's a huge amount, but it's nothing compared to if I invested in Maybank, even assuming that interests are compounded. So now here's another uh, example we have here is DG, another family renowned brand who supplies your data plan, telecommunication network, same thing. If you invest 100 per month into DG since 1997, uh, by the end of October 2022, you'll end up with a total units of around 87,000, which translated into 330,000 uh, ringgit Malaysia. 
And by comparing to our total capital invested of around 29,900, which is derived by placing 100 per month into the stocks, we will have a capital gain of around 1,008% in 25 years, while still receiving dividends every year without reinvesting such dividends. Uh, based on the and also based on the latest filings for 2022, you'll be entitled for an annual dividend of 2020, for 2022 of around uh, 11,300 based on the capital you invested. Meanwhile, if we choose to invest in uh, fixed deposits for a 2.9% per annum, we will end up with a total amount of 44,000. Uh, and it's also a huge amount, but that's nothing compared to if I invested in DG, even, even assuming that interests are compounded. Next, we have um, Heineken Malaysia, one of the uh, a, a company that sells alcohol. And if we were to invest 100 per month into Heineken since 1996, and then by the end of October 2022, we end up with a total units of 13,700, which translated into around 316,000. And this is a 905% gain, capital gain with a 31, 30, uh, with a 31,000 uh, capital invested while still receiving extra dividends each year. And based on the filings of, for 2022, Heineken has been paying favor very favorable dividends as the company delivered strong results with an annual dividend of, uh, for 2022 of the total capital invested of around 14,500. Meanwhile, if you choose to invest in fixed deposits, uh, for 2.9% per annum, you will end up with a total capital uh, amount of around 46,500. Uh, the final example I have here is uh, Public Bank. Public Bank has been a very strong stock in the past and also many investors' favorite stock. stock. So if we were to invest 100 per month uh, into the Public Bank since 1991, and by the end of October 2022, we will end up with a uh, total units of around 138,000, which translated into 619,000 ringgit for a total amount of capital invested of around 37,500. And this shows like a capital gain of uh, 1,552 in 30 years while still receiving divid extra dividends each year. And based on the latest filings for 2002, Public Bank has been uh, paying fa very favorable dividends. And the latest filing shows that the annual dividend is around uh, for 2022 is around 21,700. On the other hand, if we were to invest in the fixed deposit same uh, for the same period and uh, for at 2.9% per annum, we will only end up with around 60,185 ringgit with the, even with interest uh, reinvested. So uh, here we have some of the examples on how can we do with the money like for Petronas Chemicals, for the capital gain and annual dividends, you can buy, uh, for the capital gain itself, you can buy a, a, a flight ticket to Italy. And the uh, annual dividends, you can even buy a ticket to, uh, for a Carnival Cruise. And also, um, and also for Maybank, you can buy a Rolex and using the dividends, uh, proceeds from dividends to buy like an iPhone 13, uh, 14 Pro. And for DG.com, you can buy like, uh, the uh, a condominium, a decent condominium for the from the capital gain, and also the annual dividends you can get a, a very luxurious brand handbag, and same with Heineken and Public Bank. So next, um, investors uh, are constantly confronted with the questions to should you lump sum or dollar cost averaging if you suddenly have a decent amount of money ready to invest. Before we get into this, we need to know what are some of the benefits of dollar cost averaging. First, uh, risk reduction. So dollar cost averaging avoids the disadvantage of uh, lump sum investing through the purchase of a uh, security when its price is artificially inflated due to market sentiment, uh, which results in the purchase of a, a lower than required quantity of a security. So when the, when the stock prices discount, Burst is intrinsic price through a market correction of bubble burst and investors' portfolio will decline. So the declining market is often known as uh, viewed as a very good buying opportunity. Hence, dollar cost averaging can significantly boost long-term portfolio return potential when the market starts to rise. Next, we have discipline savings. The strategy, it is a strategy of adding money regularly 
to an investment account. Uh, as investors will build the habit of setting aside some money for investment on a, reg a monthly basis, rather than use it all up after receiving your salary. So lastly, write up market volatility. Investing a, a lump sum can, at the wrong time can be very, very risky, which can uh, adversely affect a, a portfolio's value significantly. So it is dif difficult to predict market swings. Hence, the dollar cost averaging strategy will provide a smoothening of the cost of purchase which can benefit investors. And yes, um, if looking at where we are here today, if there is any ever any like better time to do dollar cost averaging, I would say now is the time. Because uh, if I were to give a title that best describes uh, the year 2022, it would be like nothing that I've ever seen before. And I, and I believe that this same applies goes with uh, investors all around the world. As shown in the VIX index, uh, this VIX index basically tracks the volatility of the S&P 500 index. So, uh, and then if the VIX index spike up means that high, the volatility for the index is higher and vice versa is the uh, VIX index goes down, so means that volatility will be lower for the S&P 500 index. So, and this index currently, you see, entering into 2022, it remains at very, uh, very elevated levels throughout the year, as shown in the circle. And the average of the uh, index is uh, like way beyond the previous years. As you can see, the average on the index I calculated here using uh, the, putting it in a red line, as you can see, it's higher than most of the years. So, this shows that uh, people are panicking and worrying about all the events that happened throughout these years. So uh, let's take a stroll down the memory lane as you know, it's the end of the year already. And let's really look at some of the events that occurred in 2002, which led us to where we are today. So uh, it actually all started in the beginning, beginning of the year when the outbreak of the Russia and Ukraine war caught like at almost everyone off guard. As most people did not wanted to believe that, did not believe that there will be a large scale war happen in the 20th century, but it happens. And the war in Ukraine amplified economic forces that are already uh, sh uh, sh shaping the global recovery from the pandemic. Because we have experienced uh, two years under pandemics, and moving into 2002, when we think that we, when we thought that everything we uh, the pandemic we can put it behind and move on onto a future a good brighter future, but no, uh, new things happens, new black storms events happens, and the war has further increased like commodity prices and also intensified supply chain disruptions, adding to inflation. So even before Russia like invaded Ukraine, broad prices a uh, broad price pressures were already. Uh, higher and had led central banks to tighten their monetary policy and indicate increasingly a uh, hawkish future stance. The prices of the crude oil almost hit a high of around $130 US dollar per barrel, hitting household and co corporate balance sheets as well as consumptions. So this caused inflationary pressure creeping up insanely, pushing the US inflation rates to around 40 years high. Moreover, we've continued tight policies uh, towards the real estate sector and um, possibly more widespread lockdowns as part of the strict COVID zero policy. The international flight cost is increasing as creates took longer time to get in and out of China. So China has also been experienced a very uh, good, uh, very slowdown. And then uh, global recessionary fears Rules as interest rates has had risen sharply and asset price volatility had increased. So the prospect of higher borrowing costs has also increased the cost of extended fiscal support. So these changes are occurring very, very fast than what previously, what people previously expected. And also the two of the largest economy in the world, US and China, had recorded negative quarterly GDP growth. This shows that we are in uh, somehow a technical recession because uh, we have recorded quarter, negative quarterly G GDP growth, but then uh, job market is still remaining very, very strong. But still, yeah, we cannot deny that the growth, many, many countries' growth is slowing down. And also to, to add on top of that, uh, extreme weathers have made things worse. We had 
one of the we have a lot a lot of drought like extreme weather, bloods, glacier lake out bloods, uh, and also landslide and also storm and wildfire and all of these events has popping up on the news headlines more and more often, causing high number of people deaths and economic damages. As yeah, for in Malaysia we face a lot of floods in this year, right? So with all of this series of events happening one after the, the, the another, uh, this leaves global markets nothing but volatility. And uh, on the local front, the Malaysia stock market faces like international aggressions as well as domestic strife. So other than the global recessionary fears, Malaysia faces a lot of its own issues, especially the keenly awaited uh, G15 that took place last, last, uh, last Saturday. And with the PM still haven't been PM still haven't been decided yet. All of this will added like further towards volatility, and we expect the volatility in Malaysia ex stock exchange to pers persist until the end of the year. So even if like the government has formed or what, it will be in our opinion it will be quite a weak weak government. So yeah, still need to stay tuned for more information on that. So this uh in the next. Um, few slides, I would like to highlight how what investors can do to weather this market volatility more smoothly. And this chart here basically shows the year-to-date return for different stock exchanges. Uh, as you can see, uh, most stock exchanges were in the red, meaning that the experience of uh, they contracted in the year-to-date, uh, except for one stock exchange, with it, which is the uh, IBO Vespa. It is a stock exchange uh, for Brazil, and it is in the positive territory thanks to the higher commodity prices. The index that taken the largest hit was nonetheless Nasdaq, as tech companies' valuation was, was hit very badly as interest rate, uh, meaning uh, as high interest rates, meaning that uh, these stocks cannot command like such high valuations anymore. So, and the Chinese uh, stock exchange, both the China and Hong Kong exchanges, res represented by the CSI 300 as well as the Hang Seng Index, uh, respectively, uh, were among the top losers due to like a lot of political headwinds and regulatory crackdowns on education, technology, as well as the property sector towards, and also the COVID zero policy. Uh, and also affecting the industry output. So on the most right-hand side in this area, you can see, uh, you'll be able to see that more and more stock exchange ended in the positive territory after taking into account the fluctuations in currency. For example, Dow Jones Index, even though they have contracted uh, around 8% year-to-date, investors still gain like around 0.8% as the US dollar has strengthened quite a lot throughout this year. So uh, let us dive into how dollar cost averaging can help investors weather through market volatility. So uh, first, one question, do you know that if an investment is down 50%, it, it needs not 50, but 100% to get back your initial capital. However, if your investment is down 60%, some investment might think that they need uh, or. 120% because based on the previous example, 50% uh, and 100% is times two, right? But no, in fact, investors will need 150% to break even. So that's why in order to recover your losses faster, investors will need to rely on dollar cost averaging. Dollar cost averaging is a very simple strategy that involves investing in the same fund or stock at different intervals. Uh, investors can use dollar cost averaging during downturns by bringing down the average investment cost and speed up recovery process. Let's say the first case we have is a 50% drawdown. If investors were to dollar cost averaging it by buying the same amount uh, of the amount invested, the investment only needed to rebound around 33% for investors to break even compared to the 100% that we needed earlier. And the rebound uh, and the 33% rebound is actually much more easier to achieve than the 100% rebound. So investors, dollar cost uh, for, if investors dollar cost averaging into the 60% drawdown, the investment needed to rebound by only 42.6% to break even instead of the 150% needed earlier. So this shows that uh, during downturns, it, it is effective uh, 
dollar cost averaging is effective in bringing down the average investment cost and speed up the recovery process. And this slide here shows the investment recovery uh, table. It shows that for around for, for each percentage losses, uh, how much rebound is needed to recover the losses if we do not do anything, as well as how much return is needed if we those cost averaging it like 30%, 50%, and 100%, or even 120%, 125% of the initial cost. And this calculator is very useful. So the larger amount, so we can see that the larger amount we have, we dollar cost averaging it, the less return it needed to generate uh, to break even. So during like 2022, a lot of stocks experienced more than 50% losses. So if investors uh, do not do anything, they need to gain at least 100% uh, to rebound to break even. But with the dollar cost averaging, the required return is much lesser. And uh, and also noted, it's noted that a dollar cost averaging of 125% of initial capital will leave only around 30% needed to break even, as you can see here. Yeah. So, uh, wait, uh, so now let's uh, see some of the back tests where we back test the strategy using the past market downturns in Asian equities to illustrate the power of the dollar cost averaging. Let's say investors invested around 100K during the global financial crisis in May 2008. Um, and by not doing anything at all, investors will need to wait until two years later uh, during October 2010 to break even. Uh, but I, however, true, if it is dollar cost averaging uh, uh, using 100% of the initial capital in October 2008, investors are able to recover their losses in less than one year in May 2009, here, compared to here. So now let's take a look at another incident of the China's hard landing uh, and also the circuit breaker. So, uh, do, some of you might not, uh, is not familiar with this. So in during this situation, right, uh, China has experienced a very slowdown in growth and brings a lot of issues to the other Asian countries as well. So the maximum drawdown is around 37.5%. Uh, and if investors were to invest 100,000 in Malay in May 2015, they will need to wait for until two years later in May 2017 to recover their losses without the using an uh dollar cost averaging. However, if dollar cost if investors dollar cost averaging it 100 percent in January 2016 at around this price, investors are able to break even in August 2016, much faster that than without dollar cost averaging it. And lastly, if investors invest hundred thousand during the U.S. China trade war in uh January 2018 and dollar cost averaging in like uh, 2018 at a loss of 21.5%, they did be able to make a break even in 2019, March 2019. And without, if without dollar cost averaging in, they will need to wait until another one and a half year to break even. So uh, let's, let us see a side-by-side -side breakdown. Using the, the public bank example from a year ago, if we invest uh, 4,700 ringgit into the public bank in 2018 to 2021, either lump sum or, uh, or, or monthly dollar cost averaging 100 per month. And during this period, the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic has caused a massive sell-off of the stocks. And the maximum drawdown was around 38%. And by the end of 2021, we will end up off around uh, 4,842 4, for the lump sum investment and around 5,000 plus for the dollar cost averaging investment with the same capital invested of around 4,700. And the return percentage is around 3% and 8.7% respectively. So this shows that the dollar cost averaging is able to speed up recovery process. And also uh, next, so why, why dollar cost averaging is the best method to invest during a volatile market? Because hindsight bias is always there. Especially in volatile markets, dollar cost averaging can help investors to avoid big on-paper losses and also short-term uh, compared to if they had invested all of their money at once on what happened to be the wrong day. 
you won't be benefit from a full investment if you happen to invest it at the uh at the bottom of the market. But you could avoid buying all of your shares at the top of the market only to plunge into a bear market. So since we only know that we know we only know that the best time to invest is in hindsight, dollar cost averaging helps to reduce the risk of getting an extreme outcome, whether positive or negatively. So here we have some example on the return difference between dollar cost averaging and lump sum during the several market events for each stock. First, for the public bank, you can see that the dollar cost averaging method outperformed lump sum in almost all of the market-based events especially during the dot-com bubble in the early 20th century. Meanwhile, this is same with Maybank. As you can see, even during the huge drawdowns, the dollar cost averaging method recorded lesser drawdown, and some even generated positive returns. Uh, like during the dot-com bubble where it delivered around 2.8% return when the lump sum investment is down 20.7%. So, and this applies to unit trust as well where the uh, regular savings plan uh, method shows its ability to better weather through market uncertainties in a volatile market by recording lesser drawdowns. And so uh, in here, I would like to, to make a disclaimer here that all the stocks I mentioned earlier do not constitute any of the investment recommendation and investors should always be aware that investing comes with freeze and past performance do not guarantee future returns. And this chart here, uh, if investors are interested in regular savings plan but had no idea of which funds to choose, here are some of the recommended funds for different regions that are available for uh, the return or uh, the regular savings plan in our platform. You can see there are a lot of uh, different different funds from different fund houses that are from different, that covers different regions. And uh, this chart here shows where we think that opportunity lies. Uh, currently, we, we prefer uh, ASEAN countries, especially the Singapore. Although Malaysia you see here is uh, also in a very attractive place, but we re recommend investors to be a little bit more cautious as the economy con continues to face political hit, uh, uncertainties as the new, co new coalition haven't been formed yet, the new PM haven't been announced yet, and we expect more volatility moving forward. And also, we need to take into account that um, if, if the Barisan National did not join any of the, uh, did not call co lead with any of the parties, they... Uh, we have we will be likely have a very weak government, and thus we think that uh, this will create a lot of hate means for the Malaysian equities moving forward. <clears throat> Meanwhile, we also like Japan due to the accommodative stance from the uh, Bank of Japan, milder inflation, reopening play, and attractive valuations. For China, we have uh, put it at two stars because we are aware of the political uncertainties and after the 20th National Party Congress. So we, we would like to remain very cautious on the region first. So all in all, uh, here are some key takeaways from this session. The stock market is no place for uh, to invest for quick returns. While the dollar cost averaging can help to reduce the short-term impact of price swings on your performance, uh, do con please consider focusing on the long-term goals you're investing for instead. So uh, time in the market is always better than timing the market over the long term. And history shows that uh, the longer you stay invested in the stock market, the better your chances of making money. So investing in a very extreme market conditions is it's quite difficult and it's very difficult. And so dollar cost averaging helps investors to stick to their plan when they and uh, when they have the capital to put into work. So with that, I would like to uh, end my session here. So uh, thank you. And if there is any questions, please type in the chat box. Okay, if, um, if there is no questions, let us, uh, let's see you another time and this will be the end of our session. Thank you.